Ever wondered how to cover a cake dummy with fondant? Today I'm going to show you how. It's easy to do. Hi guys, it's Brittany and I'm back today to show you how to perfect your fondant skills by practicing on a cake dummy. If cake decorating is something that you guys are interested in, please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below. Don't forget to click the notification bell. You already know what that does. Let's get going. Before we cover the cake dummy and fondant, we need to just prepare it really quick. We're going to rub some shortening around it just to fill in the little gaps between the little foam pieces. So, with your gloves on, just take a scoop of shortening and you're just going to rub it like this. Kind of fun. <laughs> Essentially, this is just like you're frosting the cake, only you wouldn't want to eat this one. We've got our dummy all coated in shortening and we've got our cake turntable out and ready to go. Now we just need to prepare the turntable so that the dummy doesn't fall off when we try to cover it in fondant. I'm going to use two cans of tuna fish <laughs> to set it on so that it lifts up so I can smooth over the fondant. You can buy a special tool that connects to the bottom of your turntable with prongs on top that you can stick it in, but you don't have to be fancy to get this done. We're gonna use two cans of tuna. <laughs> so we want to tape the tuna to the turntable so that it doesn't slide and move. And then I'm actually also going to just tape the dummy to the top of the tuna cans. So let's do that now. Go ahead and plug your ears because this tape is going to be loud in the microphone. Here we go. So working with fondant can be pretty intimidating, I'll be honest. It still scares me a little bit, but only because I think I have some unresolved trauma from the first wedding cake I ever made. I'll insert some pictures. I, I struggled with that. It was falling off the cake. It was like melting off the cake. But I learned that the problem was with, with that incident that I was using cream cheese icing underneath. Never do that. Um, but I feel I've come a long way since that first wedding cake fiasco. And um, as long as you follow some crucial pointers with fondant, you'll be just fine. So here are my top five pointers for successfully covering a cake or cake dummy in fondant. First, get enough fondant from the start. There's nothing worse than rolling it out and realizing that you can't stretch it to be the right size to fit the cake you have. Second, don't roll the fondant too thin. When it's too thin, it gets even thinner when you put it on the cake or cake dummy, and that's when things start showing through and you don't get a nice, smooth-looking fondant-covered cake. Three, seal the corners first. Once you get the fondant onto the cake, you're going to press the fondant around the corners first to help hold it in position. I'll show you what I mean when we do it. Number four is trim off the extra weight from the bottom so that it doesn't continue pulling the fondant down off your cake and stretching it thin. And number five is smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Smooth until you're happy with it and you get the nice look that you want. <sighs> okay, take a deep breath. Let's get into it. I've got my fondant here. I use the brand Satin Ice. It's just the brand that I have found that I like the most, so I've just stuck with it. I used to make fondant from scratch, but I've decided recently that it's just not worth the effort, especially on a cake dummy where nobody's going to be eating it. It's just simpler to buy it. This is a really good brand. I feel that it gives me good results most of the time. I'm just opening it up and I'm going to get out the amount of fondant that I'm going to need. 
So remember, tip number one is to get out the correct amount of fondant from the start that you will need to cover the whole cake without having to stretch and pull it extra. I think rolling out too much is better than too little. So this is how I usually measure it. I take the fondant out of the package and I just kind of flatten it out. Not too thin, just like by hand. And I hold it over the cake and I just try to estimate. Usually if you have enough to reach the full top of the cake by just pressing it by hand, by the time you roll it out, it'll have enough to go over the sides. So that's kind of how I measure it. It's not an exact science, but just with practice, you'll come to find what works for you. I'm going to add a little bit more because it wasn't quite big enough. And I'm just going to flatten it a little more. To me, that looks like it's going to be enough. So now we're going to start rolling it out and I'll show you how I like to set up my workspace to get this done efficiently and quickly. I like to have the ball of fondant over here on the left so that I can knead it. And then I have my cake smoothers set over here, ready to go for once I get the fondant on the dummy. I like to have the dummy over here on the right side of me. And then right here, I'm going to prepare my area to roll out the fondant with some cornstarch. I learned this technique at culinary school where you flick it. And my teacher told me that you can tell someone who's not a true pastry chef or that doesn't know what they're doing will just grab it and sprinkle it or dump it and then rub it. And she told me never rub flour or cornstarch with your hands. You always want to throw it. So I don't know if it matters, but this is really fun to do. So this is how I prepared the space where I'm going to be rolling the fondant, just cornstarch. And then I'm going to knead the fondant before I roll it out, make sure it's nice and warm. This is really fresh. Um, I just opened that container, so it's really easy to knead. But if you have some fondant that's a little older or harder, you can actually just put it in the microwave for, you know, 10 seconds at a time just to warm it up. It'll make it a little bit easier to knead for you. So this is really warm, it's really smooth. So it's time to roll it out. All right, so before I set this down to roll, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of extra in the center. This will help keep it from sticking. I'm going to make sure my hands are nice and coated and not sticky. Flatten this out a little bit before you Roll out the fondant will help it go quicker. Make sure you have plenty of cornstarch and just set it down. And I'm going to show you my special rolling pin, <laughs> which is just a PVC pipe and it works amazing. I can't even remember how long, long ago I bought this at Home Depot. <laughs> I just went in there. It's 1.25 inches. And yeah, it works amazing. I went into Home Depot, I asked them for, for PVC pipe and they cut it for me. And I've had it ever since I've never needed a different rolling pin. None of these special fondant rolling pins or anything like that. This works amazing. So before I start rolling, I'm going to coat my hands and also my special rolling pin with some cornstarch. And here we go. First, I'll go back and forth. and side to side, then corner to corner, so it's about a fourth of an inch thick and I think that's just about right for me. So I'm going to stop and give it a little bit of a measure here. So I'm going to look for maybe the shortest from side to side and just measure it with a finger and the end of the rolling pin. I'm just going to hold it up to my cake and see if once I lay it on, it'll drape across the sides. This is once again, not an exact science. You're just kind of eyeballing it. It'll come better and better with practice, but this is looking 
definitely big enough. We're going to stop there. All right, so you've rolled your fondant out. You've got your smoothers at the ready. You're going to grab some kitchen scissors and just set them down here. You'll need those. And I'm going to take the rolling pin and gently, loosely, just roll the fondant up onto it. Lay it out. And here we go. So you're going to remember, seal the corners first. Once the corners are sealed, it won't drag and pull. If you have air bubbles, do this now. Let them out off the top. So I seal the corners with this nice soft spot. There's like a little crack in between the two soft spots on your palm. I kind of put the corner in there and just spin it and warm it like this. And then it presses up against the edge and it'll stay in place. So that now as we do this and flatten the sides, the corners are staying put and not allowing the bottom to pull. So now I'm going to trim off some of the excess that I know is way too long for the bottom of the cake. Just get rid of some extra pulling. I'll show you over here. I'm just kind of really roughly cutting it because I rolled out too much fondant. But like I said before, that's a better problem to have, in my opinion. I've had times where I'm, I roll out the fondant, I think it's going to fit. I get to one side of the cake and it's like three, four inches short and you have to really stretch and pull at that point. Your fondant gets really thin, starts cracking. It's just not good. So in order to get the side smooth, you see it's kind of folding and ruffling up. You lift it up and smooth it down. You kind of just separate it. Separate the little folds and smooth it down with your palm until it sticks to the cake. As you can see, we still have extra. Once I've made a pass around the full cake, I'm just going to take the scissors once again and trim. I just line it up with the bottom of the foam dummy and trim. Once all the fondant is stuck to the sides like it is now, now you know you've had success. Everything looks good. There may be a few cracks or bubbles or you know, other things, but we all think fondant has to look perfect, but it never really does. And so that's why people stress out about fondant. That's why I stress out about fondant. I always think it should look perfect, but it never looks quite perfect, but that's okay. Usually you're covering, covering it in decorations or other elements, so it's okay that it doesn't look perfect. You just want it to have a nice clean layer and look pretty smooth. So I'm just gonna work with this for a minute, smooth it out with my smoothers. So I use two like this and I, I like press them inwards against each other and just like use the pressure of it to smooth out the cake. If you want really sharp corners, you can work at the corners like this with one, one here on the side and one on the top. Getting good at fondant really is a lot about practice. And cake dummies are obviously an amazing way to practice because if it doesn't work, you can peel the fondant off and do it again. No cake crumbs, no frosting mixing in. Okay, once you're satisfied with how it looks, you're going to do one final trim of the bottom. I just line the scissors up like this with the bottom of the dummy once again and trim any excess off. Take all your extra fondant as soon as you're done smoothing the cake and save it to reuse because this is still good fondant. All right, once you're satisfied with how it looks, you can just take a cake board and it comes off the tape pretty easy at this point. You can, I just use my hands, I pick it right up and just set it down on the cake board because it's so light and easy to use. If you have any other spots you want to work with or re-smooth or anything, you can do that now. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I left a few fingerprints on the top, but hey, I'm not worried about it. 
Well, there you have it. Now we have a nice smooth cake, dummy. Let me know if you found this video helpful down in the comment section and with that like button. And comment down below if you have tips of your own for covering a cake or cake dummy smoothly and nicely, easily with fondant. Now, feel free to check out this video if you want to learn something else that's sweet. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Now, go tackle your fear of fondant and I'll see you guys in a week. Bye.